Ladies and Gentlemen, Sie schauen MoFun VR, ich bin Will Tansen und ich hoffe, ihr hattet jede Menge Spaß beim The Walking Dead on Sloud Let's Play von der Gamescom und konntet euch das jetzt mal ansehen und entscheiden, ob das ein Spiel ist, was ihr nett findet. Tatsächlich hatte ich direkt danach die Chance, auch noch den Entwickler zu interviewen und er hat noch sehr, sehr viele spannende Sachen darüber erzählt. Natürlich in Englisch, aber pfiffig wie ich bin, habe ich auf YouTube die Untertitel in Deutsch eingetippt. Ja, ihr müsst also auf YouTube einfach nur Untertitel aktivieren auf Deutsch und dann kriegt ihr eine fantastische Übersetzung von meiner Wenigkeit. Ich freue mich natürlich, wenn ihr mir dafür auch einen Daumen zeigt, beziehungsweise wenn euch VR und solche Sachen interessieren, dürft ihr natürlich auch gerne diesen Kanal abonnieren. Jetzt aber zum Interview. Ich verspreche euch, das ist ziemlich cool. Bye bye. A de-limbing subsystem where you can chop off any, any joints at the, at the wrist or the elbow or that's even decapitation. Yeah. Uh, there's also a carving system where you can actually carve a Z or a Zorro in their, in their chest or carve anywhere. If there's an extra core mesh on the outside yeah. that when carved away, it dynamically reveals the endoskeleton and the guts and everything. And it's highly optimized so you can have tons of zombies on screen. You can still get all the core. Uh, there's also the impaling system. So when you stab in, you can actually stab into them, embrace and pull it out. And I think what you mentioned with the feedback is context-based physics. So for example, if I take a katana and I swing really fast, based on the velocity uh, and the angle, it could cut all the way through. Yeah. Or if it's a little, if I swing slow or at the wrong angle, it could it could go in and then stop and get stuck. And then you have to pull it out. So there's yeah. all these different systems Sometimes interacting. My, 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 uh My, my knife uh, yeah. stuck in one body. Exactly. Yeah. And then you it's, have to <laughs> everything feels good, even with, with the pistol shooting in the hands. It's awesome. Yeah. And that's interesting you mentioned the, the shooting, the, the blood decals is a big piece of that, where a lot of times with games, you get a blood decal and it's, it's like they have a set decal and then maybe 10 variations of that decal, but it's, it's the same wherever you shoot. For this, depending on the angle that you shoot at, it dynamically creates the splatter. Okay. So if okay. I shoot like this, it'll create a cone splatter. Yeah, yeah. If I shoot up, it shoots like that. If I shoot straight, it'll be a circle. So that that dynamic splattering effect makes it feel more real, as opposed to it just being a bunch of canned decals. Yeah, it feels very good. Uh, do you have an idea when it's coming out? It's coming out in the fall. Um, we haven't uh, we haven't uh, solidified the, the release date yet, but it's uh, we plan on it coming out pretty soon. And, and uh, another, another typical question is uh, how long will it be? Is it story driven? Or yeah. What happens? So there's two pieces to it. There's two modes. The first mode is a campaign mode, and the second mode is scavenger mode. So campaign mode is a very long form, uh, linear story experience over seven missions. Um, and that has quite a few hours of gameplay depending on how fast you play. Uh, and in that we actually built, uh, we wrote a custom story with the AMC's writing team from the show to actually interlace a, uh, an episodic story uh, into the later seasons of their world. Um, so it actually ties in with some things uh, with the show, but it's also a wholly custom, a uh, whole cloth new story, uh, where there's new characters, there's a new faction called the Raiders, uh, there's a new character called the Stranger that you encounter, um, and it's a, across a large seven-part uh, series. So that is that part is story-driven. That could be co-op as well. You can play with two players. Uh, and really? Then, yeah, yeah. Um, the, the, the whole game? So you can do Rick and Michonne. So you, uh, all four characters are playable yeah. um, as single player, but if you want to do co-op, we have a, a unique twist on the story for Rick and Michonne. Oh. So it's even more dynamic after that. So it's, there's a lot of ways so you can even play twice through and have a, a slightly different experience with the co-op mode. Uh, and then scavenger mode, of course, is, is also multiplayer. This is more of an objective, uh, it's like a dynamic objective-based mode. So instead of it being a linear uh, level design, it's a very large, expansive map that's non-linear, and you have to scavenge for as many items as you can within the time frame as the horde is, co is considerably approaching. Uh, and there's dynamic objectives uh, as you play through this mode. And then eventually, when the time runs out, you have Eugene show up in the van. And you have to hurry up and get to the van as fast as you can. And you can hold out longer if you want past the time limit to collect even more items. Uh, but th at that point, you have a huge horde uh, that's amassing on you. And you have to hold out for as long as you can. So that, in, that, in that mode, it's, a, it's more for, um, it's, it's dynamically generated over time. So you can play it for, uh, it's like for a lot of replayability with your friends. Uh, and you can play with multiple people at the same time. 
Um, so you can do multiplayer. Uh, so that one is with scavengers. You can choose any of the characters, and you're going to be limited to two, so that's not too easy. Um, but you can do two-player scavenger mode with any of the characters. All right. Cool. Yeah. It sounds great. Uh, I, Thank I, you. I, I love the combat. Uh, it's, it's fun to play, and again, we have uh, some very great stuff from Subius. Yeah. I, I just wonder how, how you guys drop it. Uh, that match games and, and, <laughs> and, and, and any games cool. So it's it's very, very cool. Oh, it's very kind. Thank you very much. <laughs> I I, uh, I didn't get the chance to uh, to test uh, better way till now, but I hope uh, and then next time I can. Yes, yes, we'd love and, to. Yes. And I just wanna. Uh, uh, and what speed you drop to stuff. <laughs> it happened very quickly. It kind of turned out that way. Um, we, we've been working on these titles for um, 12 to 18 months is our average development time. Uh, Walking Dead was 14 months. Uh, Battle Wake was about 13 months. And then the latest one, Westworld, was around 18 months, including uh, the pre-production. Um, and uh, it just, we didn't necessarily plan it at the beginning for them to all happen simultaneously, but the way it worked out with uh, with our releases and with our partners, it ended up making more sense to release them fairly quickly after another. And Westworld was just announced as well. That was announced yesterday and it released today. What do your team exist of? We have four teams at any given time, uh, strictly on the studio side. We have, so, so we have about 100 full-time employees. And uh, there's anywhere between 10 and 20 or more people working on one product at a time. And then, of course, we also have a platform team and operations and, and all these different things. But uh, for the core game products, um, we usually have around four teams working on separate projects simultaneously. Okay, so um, I have the last question for you. Certainly, yeah. Uh, because uh, I told you I'm a very big fan okay. of... Uh, Scream Factor, yes, yeah, so, yeah. And... Uh, is, is there a chance of Sprint Vector coming for, for Oculus Quest maybe too? Oh, that's a great question. Yes. We haven't, uh, we have nothing to announce for Quest for Sprint Vector, but it's it's certainly something that uh, we're thinking about. Um, and personally, I would love to see it on Quest, and it, it may, may be possible in the future, but uh, we don't know. We don't know. We'll, we'll see. Okay, okay. Because uh, uh, it'd be very fun though. With the, I think the motion could work well. It, it's a cool because of this uh, unplugged and all from that. Yeah, and, and I think uh, Spin Vector will uh, benefit a lot from, from the free movement. Yeah, but okay. Yeah. I, I can wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so glad that you love that game. It's one of my I, I favorites. Can wait. Uh, maybe on Oculus uh, Quest 2. Yeah, there's more generations to come, you know, and, it's, and we, we're building a, our big focus is we wanted to build a, a large portfolio of games with a wide variety of mechanics and themes. And once we have this, which we're getting close to having a pretty large portfolio, then um, Quest 2, Quest 3, we can start to look at our catalog and see what might, might make sense for us to do this. So then at the end, uh, it's, it's just left to, to thank you from the community for the VR fans for oh, all these good games. Yeah. Oh, likewise. It's, 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 it's very great. Them. It's very great to have uh, <laughs> some developer who push the, the whole thing further and further. It's, it's great. Thank you thank so you. much. <laughs> That's amazing to hear. Thank you. Right on. All right.